So hey everybody, welcome. We're here back in the uh, famous Netto living room. It's great to see everybody here. And I'm sitting with the elusive and mysterious Sylvia Netto, who, who um, we are not showing on film today, but uh, her voice is very distinctive. So of course we're all, gonna, uh, we're all gonna recognize it. And what are we doing here? Well, we're here because Recently, the Queen's DA released all of these files, and I'm sure, Sylvia, this is probably the first time you ever saw these files, right? Yes. Um, so these are the files, of course, from Yonkers Police Department documenting all of the crimes, uh, or at least most of the crimes, that took place against this family here in Yonkers. And according to the police reports, from, 19, from May 1976 to 1977, at the time of Berkowitz's arrest, the issue for us here as Son of Sam researchers is that the Nettos, on at least three different occasions, gave different um, testimony, different oral history as to the, the timeline of all this. And so because it's important to get all these stories on tape and it's important to have a full picture of the historical record and to get all sides of the story on tape, we are here to uh, uh, interview Sylvia, and we're gonna just gonna basically go through these police reports, and we're going to uh, have her comment on them. So thank you, Sylvia. Really appreciate it. So we're starting with the first one, May thirteenth, nineteen seventy-six. This is the one, of course, that deals with the, um, well, the shooting of the. Uh, no, the this is the cocktail. Molotov cocktail, right? Yes. The shooting of the dog was the last one, and of course, this is just a regular, you know. Nothing in here much to report on other than here it says a sign spoke to Margaret DeGuardi. Who was Margaret DeGuardi? Mm -hmm. You don't even, you don't remember a Margaret DeGuardi? No. Dio Guardi? Anything with no. DeGuardi? Who stated that at 3.30 she heard a crash in the vicinity. She looked out from the window of her home, which is adjacent to. She so did she live at 22? Margaret, Margaret Di Oguardi. I you don't, don't know, maybe it's a Polish, it's a Polish name? Italian. No, Bernardi is the one up here at the house. He's the one of the house. Interesting, I wonder who this, I wonder who this Margaret Di Guardi was. It says here, she called Mr. Netto, who she knows personally. Uh, the name doesn't sound familiar. I know there was like a Polish uh, gentleman. Okay. I don't know if he lived with his with mom, the mother, with the mom. With the mother. That's maybe his maybe father they, was Polish and she was Italian. And she was Italian. It's possible. I mean, I don't think it really matters all that much, though. Yeah, but no, but it's not like a name that... that That's popping back mm -hmm. out at you. So Mr. Netto and a Mr. Diacutis. Who was this Mr. Diacutis? Don't remember him either. No. And other neighbors extinguished fire partially with garden hose. Um, all right. So a sign spoke to the owner, Neto, who stated that he has not had any arguments with neighbors and cannot understand why the fire occurred. Uh, that was my, my, my father. Okay. That was your father. He mm -hmm. stated this approximately one year ago. Okay. So one year before this incident, which would bring us to May of 1975. Rocks were thrown to the second floor, and also a bottle was thrown by, at the house at use in the area, but he did not know who was responsible. He okay. also stated that his German shepherd dog sometimes barks at children. So I think that, like, the rocks that were thrown here, I think we can probably all agree that that probably was not Berkowitz. Do you think? I think uh, the road they threw there with the aqueduct. It was the aqueduct? They put those rocks to... Through the side of the yeah. house? But not to our home, to their home. Okay, because it says here. It's, yeah, but we had um, just to clarify. We had in the this where you have your bedroom, we had rocks thrown, and the thing was that it was very late. That that's the only thing that it could have been kids mm -hmm. because we didn't live in the safest neighborhood. <clears throat> right, and you said that in your our first interview, which I actually didn't realize until watching back at it, that you guys, um, that you conceded that those rocks might have been thrown by neighborhood youth having nothing to do with Berkowitz. Mm -hmm. So, um... Possible. Possibly, right, exactly. I mean, we don't know. So a sign spoke to Mr. Neto's mother-in-law, one Andrea Almeida, tenant of the yeah. second floor. She stated that sometime during the night she heard a crash adjacent to her window and upon looking out. So this is all regular stuff. I don't think this needs to be commented on. 
We let's talk about this Jack Giancarlo though, because we do need to get him on record. Um, John Gonzalo, Gonzalo. So G O N. G O N. So a sign spoke with Mr. Jack Gonzalo. Floor to no avail. Now you said that he didn't even speak English, correct? He spoke at the time, no. And actually, he was one of the ones that put out, helped put out the fire. Put out the fire. Because his name now is going around as the Wicked King Wicker and involved with Berkowitz. Do you have any opinion on him being involved with David Berkowitz? He <laughs> did not speak, um, you know, very much English. He didn't speak English oh, very well right. at all. And he was kind of, they were, were, I think it was in construction that he worked or something. Yeah. You, you don't see him hanging out with Berkowitz, in other words, right? No. It's just totally no, no. Okay. All right. So then now they talk to you, Sylvia. So a sign spoke to um, one, we're going to say that that's Sylvia Neto because okay. daughter of complainant. Uh, she told the Assan that in the early morning hours, she heard a couple of youths in the area just prior to the bottle being thrown against home. She stated that she heard some noise outside the window and a young voice of a black say, Eddie, Eddie, come here, come here. Well, I find it surprising that I would say black because how could you tell from the voice that somebody's black? Um, Interesting. But okay. I do remember Eddie. And I, I told you. Right. And I heard Eddie, Eddie, and then... Uh, the you know the the cops say sure that they weren't calling um, because I guess the lady or something had said that they were that she was calling for us or something or the this lady. Uh, Dear Guardi, I don't know, but but the issue is because we did speak about Eddie once before, yes. and the issue was well, w was this Eddie heard during the Molotov cocktail or was it another incident like a rock incident? And uh, I think it was like up in the air, but it's saying here that the Eddie happened with the Molotov cocktail. Are you are you remembering Eddie and Molotov cocktail now that? It, my recollection of Eddie, of me saying that Eddie was when they threw the rocks. Okay. But look, it's 45 years ago. Okay. But, and the reason is because I was sleeping back here, which would make sense if people, you know, like kind of trying to, trying to get something started or throw rocks or whatever that they they would be here. So you heard the Eddie in this back bedroom. Yes. And you were in the room upstairs, upstairs during the Molotov cocktail. In the yeah. front. Yeah. So it's strange that this would be here. Do you think the possibility exists that maybe you were talking about another incident and you were saying Eddie, Eddie, and the, and the police just kind of you're put these two together? I don't know. But I you're, you're, but you're <laughs> but remembering. I remember Eddie. I remember you remember Eddie. Eddie, but you remember Eddie as the rock throwing back in this back bedroom over here and not upstairs. All right, so. Uh, yeah, uh, take care of upstairs, Sylvia. What? You all the time talk to what? Just sleeping there with my mother. And all the time you talk what you hear, is say, Eric, Eric. Outside. Eddie. Yeah. No here and back. I then you, you probably have better memory than okay, me. Okay, so 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 it's possible that the Eddie thing was with the Molotov cocktail yeah, after all. Something of those, yeah. Okay. All right. So whatever. I mean, it's not a big deal. The issue no. the issue here is mainly timeline and when all this started. Um, all right. So we don't need to go over this anymore. This is all relatively simple stuff. The next one is December eighteenth, nineteen seventy six. December twenty fourth. Are you talking about the dog? Uh, yeah, but it's her, it, 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 it says here that the report was taken on the, on, the, on the 28th. That doesn't make sense. That is weird. That's four days later. You guys, you guys called the cops that Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And had that. And had they the, took my dog. All right. So the, the police report, and you see it here. It says December Where? 28th. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, right here. Oh, yeah. Probably a typo. Okay, so December 28th, 76. Oh, yeah. Right. That is weird. Why would they why would they do this 4 days? So so here you have the police either making a typo, a major typo because it's a 4-day discrepancy or making this report 4 days later uh, from their notes of that night, yeah. which mm -hmm. also can introduce in it also can introduce in um, you know, false memories the possibility but this was, so basically, all right, so this is basically having to do with the dog being shot. Now, we don't need to go over every word in this because this was written from the perspective of your father, okay? 
So what's not in here is the whole thing about you seeing Berkowitz or somebody you thought was Berkowitz running down the hill here on Warburton and getting into a car. Now, can you just repeat for the, for the audience, can you just repeat what that story again about witnessing? Yes, well, I want to be clear, Manny, that I've always told you that um, it, it was others that had actually seen that clearly, and I wasn't sure because of my age if I was, you know, that I had actually seen it or okay. because I know I came out, I saw the dog, and there was a lot of commotion when my uncle came through the side door because uh -huh. I, I started screaming that something happened to the dog, somebody killed the dog. The, all the action was this way. So they were indicated whether it was me, Jackie, or whatever. They all went down They all went way. down the hill on Warburg. Right. right. There was crying me around and so what were they and so what did they say at the time? Well, my well my uncle who unfortunately passed away and, and but he would definitely know the specifics He's, he was old enough uh, was that they got away. So and they being because you guys said that you saw someone get into a passenger so, side. Not me. Okay, but Jackie and Yes, Teresa. Jackie was older than me. Right. It, it was us, the three of us were the ones that, that were upstairs. And I just want to make it clear, too, that my father hadn't seen any of that. Right, right? exactly. Was, everybody was downstairs. There was probably like 50 people downstairs. And all this happened. Everybody came out um, when we started screaming that something yeah. happened to the dog. Why don't you cry and write yeah. and, so, and so what I'm, what I'm seeing in here is that um, you guys weren't interviewed at all. Neither your name, Jackie's name, or Teresa's name is not in any of these police reports about the incidents, about this particular incident. So they only interviewed your father? OK. Uh, oh, I don't know. I, so that's the other thing is I was. When the cops came, um, my dog was in that state. Right. I was scared. I didn't want to be outside. I right. was definitely they took me inside. Right. Because I was yeah, my completely was here inside. Yeah. Crying. Yeah. Because we didn't want to see any of that. So. And what about Teresa and Jackie? I don't know. Because they're not in here as being as being interviewed. The only person being interviewed here is 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 your father. You can believe it. Who didn't see. According to you, he didn't see anybody. No, no. He wasn't there to no. see, to witness this. My brother no. knows that I'm sorry. You talk to you. Yeah, that's fine. When that happened, they started screaming. He here. came out with. I run into my husband and everybody. My my husband, but he's in the back. The, my son, my brother-in-law, the cop. He take the, he, he go, and then he see that man take the car. That somebody waiting for him. And right there. Yeah. So your uncle saw this as well. It, obviously, something was going down there because right. why would people? I would say naturally, if you're hiding, I right. think I think a Neo had suggested earlier, a couple of months ago, whatever that he was saying, right? That um, that possibly it was from there, or, or maybe that they went in hiding. Right. But I remember clearly that all the action was going was going there. Down I mean, the there hill. was a lot of confusion. I went inside because I was scared. Uh huh. And. Everything was there. Everything right. was going. So why was it there? Because we were calling and saying to go. I would I would imagine that you know you guys were not trying to deceive anybody. You were just following what was actually happening. So uh, so if you yeah. saw someone running down, or if Jackie and Teresa saw it, why would they make anything like? There's no incentive for them to lie about that. Is the point. So if people did see this, and we have Jackie and Teresa both on tape saying that they saw this, the issue is why isn't in the isn't isn't it in this police report um, about that? The, and and the only thing I can think of is that your father simply didn't know, and they didn't interview you guys. Do you have any opinion on this? My father certainly, at the moment, was not going to be asking me for information because he saw how I was. Right. Obviously. Um, where is it? Like, <laughs> well, exactly. Guide me here. It, to this is yeah. This is mainly uh, investigation. Of the dog had been shot. It says nothing about witnessing a, uh, someone running down the hill. It talks mainly about removing the bullet. Yeah, but my girl, the cop, and told the cop. 
Your brother-in-law told the cop? Uh, yeah, they talked in here with the cop. You were an eyewitness, Maria, to the brother-in-law telling the police that there, someone ran down I this. I can tell you, he's the one talk about you mind. He's the one go with the guy in the back of him, those, those people. Right, right. He said a guy going down, somebody waiting for him in a car. Now, in the corner. So, right. Maria, you're saying that the police did know about this car there and I someone running to it. You, you saw it. You saw... Que él lo dijo. Right, and then there is one day interview Sylvia, Mosaka. Yeah, but you would know better All than me. All of you are crying and screaming here, is what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah. It's my, my brother-in-law, my husband to go down, you know, he go, but my brother-in-law is the one, so he's running right away with the gun. It's very interesting that that's not in the police report. Oh, but they have to, not under his name, they have to have it. It's not, there's no mention at all of your brother-in-law's oh, name. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you are wrong. In fact, I think you guys are right. I'm on your side. But people look at these police reports and they say, well, why isn't that there? Why isn't this there? Maybe so then they... They don't want no problem or something because you might, you are a cop, you are in a place like that. You see what happened, we're screaming. He see the dog right away. He's the one go and back at the person. Right, right, it's, it's, it is confusing. Now here we see Mr. Nato further stated that he learned from one Tony Teodor. That's Tony my, Teodor, my, 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 yeah, my, not, not the cop. The other one. Tony, Tony was my, my uncle, but not, not the cop. Uncle. So here it is, so it's actually in here. Except it's a red car this time, as opposed to a he, white car. Well, Tony, Tony's not my uncle, not my, the cop, the But FBI. not the one that saw it. Correct. And not the one that Maria said Tony that spoke to the... Tony was just part of the party. But here, Tony's saying, Tony, all right, so Tony Teodor, we have now established, was part of the Neto clan, yes. part of the Neto party that night. Not a stranger. This is important. No. Okay, because it implies here that he was just a stranger on Wicker, on Warburton Avenue. So no. Tony Teodor claimed that he had ver observed a male, no further description, jump into a red auto with a black top and proceed north on Warburton Avenue shortly after the shooting, but was unable to state where, in fact, subject did appear from prior to getting into the said vehicle. That would make sense if he was downstairs and didn't see it, right? If he only saw the end result of the guy well, getting in the car. Yeah, said, uh, me a slow to let Tony do it, say. That it was... Here, it says... Tony Teodor says he saw a man. He couldn't describe the man. Yeah. He saw a man jump into a red automobile, a red car, with a black top. Now, you guys said white car with a black white. top. You but, white. but, you know, red, white, 45 years, that's not a big deal to me. And especially my brother-in-law, I think the first thing to run away from the and go in the back is me. <laughs> right. My other brother-in-law, yes, he's a cop and he's running. But Tony, her... Uh... Tony was... <laughs> Tony what? <laughs> no, I said Tony... T t t t <laughs> I love him. He's, he's, he's past. He's a good person. But, but uh, she was just saying that it was my uncle, uh, Rockefort, that actually do, I took, took right. off and ran. So Tony might have been telling a story that maybe, maybe someone else... Maybe he saw it or maybe he saw it because maybe from he saw here... It. Remember, this wasn't here. Imagine this right. is all This out. is all empty. So if you're even here by the... Um, sorry. No, no, if, you're not going to be if, seen. Don't if worry. If you're here by the basement door, uh -huh. you can see Warburton Avenue. Oh, okay. So so the basement people partying downstairs, and don't worry, you weren't, you weren't shown. The basement people could have seen as soon as they walked out down on Warburton. So right. this is making some sense to me. This is This is... What I'm getting here is that you guys weren't in, it were interviewed at all. No. The girls were not interviewed. So that's why your well, story... Well, I was not. I, I don't know if Jackie was interviewed. I don't know. They're not in here, is it? There's uh, Teresa was interviewed. Huh? No, ninguna de esas. What they do is crying and screaming. So they're all crying and screaming. Yeah. And then Nunguna, no one, none of no, them were interviewed. Myself, they don't, because I am scared too, but they, they I don't know how to interview. Maybe my husband. Uh, maybe Tony. Tony. Or... So they only spoke to Tony and your dad, which means that they didn't get a complete picture. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's fair to say, that they did not get a full and complete picture of everything because they only spoke to two people. 
Mm. Well, I just know they didn't speak to me. That's all right. All I could and I didn't want to speak to anyone anyway, even if they would have asked me. At the now, moment. the the um, the rest of these have to deal with. Um, uh, here's September twenty second, nineteen seventy seven. So now we're getting into the letters. What, so, which one are we? Here? So Sylvia doesn't have this one. So oh, okay. I, I, we have to look at it together. So the assigned proceeded to, and, and thereat spoke to with Maria Neto in regards to threatening letters that she had received in the past regarding this investigation. So Mrs. Neto related that a couple of weeks after the arson of her home, which occurred on May 13th, 1976, a letter addressed to her was intercepted by her mother, Andrea Almeida, which her sister... Sylvia. Sylvia, what does that say? Esteban. Estebanes. Esteban. Esteban is of red without the knowledge of Mrs. Neto. So that all makes sense because you said you didn't know the letters. Of course, I was sick. You were in the sick. Hospital. But the issue yeah. is here when was this hospitalization? The issue again. It was before this. Before. It was before this. Yeah, before. But the statement, what, he, what Manny's saying. Um, and we always like, because remember the letters, we, we never saw them. Right. So it was hearsay. But what it says here, Ma, is that it was, you had said that it was after the Molotov cocktail. You can speak in Spanish. Speak in Spanish, actually. Right, no, okay. she understands perfectly. Okay, okay. You know? Después del Molotov. That, that's what it says here. That I can... But it says here, it says here, the letter expressed... Hate for the Neto family and further yes. that the dogs of and hell. They burn the house from the top to the ground. Yeah. Right, and the Neto family had to be destroyed. That was clearly Berkowitz yes. sending the letter. Yes. This letter was not signed and it was immediately destroyed by the mother. Now, here's the important. See, Mrs. Neto was not informed of this letter at the time because she was suffering from a nervous condition. Yes. The police department was not notified of this letter. Now, here is the key sentence according uh, for all of us here mm -hmm. mrs netto stated that at no time did she receive any other letters nor did she receive any threatening telephone calls so from what this says it says this is implying this this document here the molotov cocktail was first letters after everything started with the molotov cocktail according to this police report mm -hmm. right here and so this is the controversy. This is where it lies because you guys were adamant, and I believe that you're telling me the truth, that these letters came first, that everything was happening before the Molotov cocktail, and that, in fact, there was some Mets game. Like, you remember some Mets game. When my mother was in the hospital, I, my father had taken me to the Mets game, and I remember that they lost against the Padres. Padres. So, yes. And now, you had mentioned that it was like a blowout loss. Yeah. It what, was my first game, so it was pretty... What, now, the only, now, what do you consider a blowout loss? Like, what would you have considered as a 10-year-old a blowout loss? Probably, you know, six or seven runs that you can't recover from, and they were bad. Because the, the, the only blowout that I found with Padres versus Mets from the year 70, I, I looked from 74 to 76, was in July of 1974, the Mets lost against the Padres 8-2, to two, which covers your five or six runs that they, mm -hmm. couldn't, that they couldn't. So is it the possibility that it was that game, or you just can't say for sure? Many, <laughs> so <laughs> many things that are like blurry from that. Of course, of course. Um, at, like I said, even the letters, if you think about it, actually, I'm, I'm, it could have been after May. I'm not saying that it, it wouldn't. After the Molotov is when you would get the, it, it doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense is. Yeah. The letter, I was in a hospital. She always said that. Like, my mother has always said that. Always. The that letters came in the hospital. When she was in the hospital when and they didn't tell hospital. her the, the, when they, they told her was actually but after. This is what happened, excuse me. This Give her the. What happened. I was in the hospital very sick. Then they, my husband. Hold this up to, hold this up to her. <laughs> La estrella. <laughs> La estrella. <laughs> La estrella se está apagando. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, no. A mí no me dijeron nada. To, to, to. They don't say nothing to me. 
because I was in a hospital. I was 40 days in a hospital in New Jersey because I would never break down for mm -hmm. something else. No, no right. Time. Then, when the letter come, I was in a hospital, and my sister, Sylvia, and my mother, my sister read it, she's the one read it to my mother. And my husband is very excited because I was in a hospital, and they don't want to tell him that letter, because that letter say, and those part of that letter say, they're gonna burn in our top of the ceiling, I don't know, they found the queen. Mm -hmm. and they going to destroy this house from the top to the ground. So now this hospitalization. And, eh? so, then they rip the letters and my husband never knew that. After that, start coming the calling. Then they call my daughter one day too. And my husband, who you are? Because my daughter is a child to you want to talk to her. Now, all throughout this time period, the letter and the calls, yeah. the Molotov cocktail, you're sure it has not happened yet? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. That situation I start with everything grow and grow. So the me. Molotov cocktail, what you're saying, was a culmination, was yes. a was a was a after the end of a little bit of a buildup. Yes. Uh, think of it naturally, right? We and and um, like the calls were never, oh I'm gonna do this to you or whatever. It was always right. like Oh, don't you have a daughter? Oh, wait, hold on. Give the Sorry. Uh, don't you have a daughter named Sylvia? Doesn't she go to the school that I went to? Um, and my father would like, who are you? Why are you? Why are you doing this? It was never like I'm going to do something to you or anything. That's. I wonder if this was if it was even Berkowitz calling. Is it? I mean, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know for sure. Because that could have been just a pervert. Because if he knew what school you were going to, it could have been like a pervert okay. from like a t even a teacher. But the letters were Berkowitz. The letters were absolutely Berkowitz. Because it talks about the same thing he talked about in the yeah. Son of Sam letters. Yeah. Right. And But I do want to also state one thing. Because um, now that... I, I, I thought I, I had dropped this. I thought I wasn't going to talk about this anymore. Um, but our dog. Right. We got Rocket because of what was happening in the house. But when did you get Rocket? Well, Rocket was about two years old when he passed. He was a young adult uh, male. So um, you German got Rocket. But Rocket was, but Ro the shooting of Rocket, though, was at the end of what, like a year and a half? Was from May 13th he was two to years December. Old. Yeah, he was two years old. Okay, so let's do the math. And how old was he when you got him? Um, he was... Very little? No, no, no. Oh. He wasn't a puppy. Okay. So he was um, he was probably like four months. Something like that. So four, four months. months old, roughly. And if he was two years old, with, in, in, in December 76, that would bring us to December 74 when Rocket was born. Right, roughly, which means that you get Rocket, December, you get Rocket in April of 75, roughly? Probably, because I was, I was in, um, this was like, this all happened, and, and I remember because I was, it was like sixth and seventh grade. Okay. Right, it was sixth and seventh grade, and that's about when we got our dog. So you got Rocket because of the things that were happening to your house. Correct. And you get Rocket in, and you're, you're saying in just this timeline, and how sure of you are of this timeline, you're saying you got Rocket in April of 76, roughly. No, April, no. This was in, we got Rocket in 75. 75. 75. Yeah. Because yeah. he was Right, right, old. exactly, 74, yeah. duh. So I did the math wrong. So. So, and, and you're saying absolutely that you got Rocket because of these incidents? Yes. Well, Ma, you, you know, you have your memories better than mine, I think. Why did we get the dog? That I don't be too sure. It's a king? No, not king. I'm talking no, about Rocket. But king is after. Yes. King is after Rocket. Yeah. Yeah, after me. Yeah. Because my father did not like dogs. Uh-huh. I love dogs. Yeah. And he wouldn't get the dog because he loved his garden, um, you know, in great condition. Mm -hmm. But when this started happening, my uncle 
suggested that yeah. you know you get a small you get a, a good german shepherd purebred mm -hmm. you train him it, actually now that i think about yeah. it it's in here in the in the police reports if you if you go here to the police report of uh, of the of the molotov cocktail it says here that your German Shepherd dog sometimes barks at children in the area when they come near mm -hmm. them. So you, according to this police report, this is why we're here to mm -hmm. all talk about this. May 13th, 76, you already had the German Shepherd. Absolutely. Yeah. You're and saying- he was an adult dog. <laughs> I mean, he was By big. May of 76. Yeah. And so by May of 76, they already had the German Shepherd. By the first incident, according to the police report, they already had the German Shepherd rocket, which they say they bought in, in. They bought and got in response to these incidents happening at their house. So I think we just we just kind of in the through the back door confirmed your timeline as well. In a fuzzy way, I guess, but it's uh, not even fuzzy. Here, here is the existence of Rocket in the police report on yes. May thirteenth, nineteen seventy six, which means you had Rocket already yes. on the day of the so called first incident. And you're saying that you bought the dog because of these incidents. So right there, that is, to me, that's, that's more, um, more um, corroborating evidence. Now, here's the same timeline again. June 76, you received the letter, okay? Threatening phone call 76. It doesn't say anything about 75. No. So what we're doing is we're holding up this document. This document's actually in the Glassman reports. Okay, and it's dated September 22nd, 1977, a month after the arrest and, and, and over a year after these incidents happened. So it says here, yeah, it says that it's all happened in 76, not, nothing was 75, but we have this from May of 76 showing that they had Rocket already and they bought Rocket in response to the, to the, to the incidents happening. So this has to be wrong. You had to have gotten letters in 75. The calls, I'm willing to concede. That could have been a pervert. It, mm -hmm. could, it could have been, had nothing to do with, with, with Berkowitz. He wasn't known for making calls anyway to people. Um, but letters, the letters are the key. Yes, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, thank you for actually <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing a thorough uh, investigation. Oh, uh, I'm of, trying. Of I don't this. know how thorough I am. I but... mean, I don't know what it's, you know, I was, like I said, when, when you left that, that site, I was like, okay, I'm going to just put it behind <laughs> Put it me behind and, me, right. And I'm good. No, um, no, no. This, as soon as these police reports came out, believe me, what happened was people in their zeal to prove me wrong, because I have some, a lot of detractors out there, people jumped on these police reports to see, say, see, Manny was wrong. The Nettos were completely wrong. These police reports are right. And what I'm saying is these police reports could be right, but you deserve to answer to these things. You deserve to respond to these things. And what you're saying, again, and uh, 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 you say it for me, please. Again, please tell me to the best of your recollection, Sylvia, the timeline for these events with the years involved as well. Yes. The, well, it's, it was definitely two years of our life. Uh -huh. um, and it started, it was very subtle. Like I said, maybe the, the, the rocks had nothing to do with that at three in the morning. Right. Um, and the calls. And then since uh, my mother, since the beginning, um, she always said, you know, this, is, this was happening when she was in the hospital. It's never, that story has never changed. Now the hospital though, you are. Yes. How can we date that hospital visit? Uh, maybe we can get the hospital records. <laughs> but you're sure that it was 74, 75, the 74, hospital? 75, Which yeah. coincides with the Padres' 8-2 to two loss at, at Shea Stadium in July of 76, which is also, Sylvia, a month after Berkowitz gets out of the Army. So he could have, and you know he had relatives here on Halls Terrace and Roberts Avenue. I don't know if you knew that. No. He had a cousin. A cousin. Uh, biological too. It wasn't even his adoptive family. He had biological mm -hmm. relatives listen, living on Roberts Avenue and Halls Terrace. Hey, there he is. We just made a uh, 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 Mike, Sylvia Neto, Sylvia I'm Mike sure. Lorenzo. I'm well. His father was actually one of the detectives that is on these reports. So what we're dealing with, Mike, is, and I'm trying hard to not get Sylvia in the uh, in the um, in the in the shot. Oh, look at his beautiful granddaughter. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> I 
of the shirt. So Mike, we just came up with what, what possibly might be a very major uh, discovery here. Well, not major, but, uh, but so Sylvia says, so the police reports say May 13, 76 is the first incident. Okay. Okay, the fire bombing. Okay. Family insists the, the, the letters were coming as early as late 74, early 75. Okay. Can I ask a question? Of course. The letters, weren't they the ones kind of asking about the, weren't they kind of, were some was of them perving? The dog, or was it about you? you were guys? some of them perving out on you, the letters, or was that no, more the, the calls? Yeah, no. the The calls weren't even. It was just, do you have a daughter? You know, I, um, I want to speak to Sylvia. Th those were the those were the calls. When when was that? What years were that? It was when I was in sixth and seventh grade. Which was so, seventy five. Okay. Se seventy five, seventy six. Yeah. And but but the letters. What what did the letters state? Now I'm going to go by, by what's, it was something about, well, remember, I never saw the letter. Right, right, never right, saw right, the letters. Right. The letters are destroyed. She yeah. never saw the right. letters. Somebody it was just did. what was, what was yes. told to us yeah. about, uh, and by my Aunt Sylvia, about the, the, the queen, and I'm going to burn the house from top to bottom, and something about the attic. They were, it was, like, diabolical. It definitely had uh, some. Satanic just weird. Controls. Yeah. And that was 74, 75. We believe it's at least, it, 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 I don't know, 74, 75. 75. But it but was definitely who, before 70. Before, before the Molotov. Cocktail. Before the Molotov. And. Um, An another way we just proved this started. Do you want to ask yeah. your question? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Um, so they, so Sylvia says that they got the dog Rocket, the German Shepherd that ended up getting shot on December of 76, just on New Year's Eve 76, that they got Rocket two years before he was shot. Um, and they also got Rocket in response to these incidents that were happening. Right. Now on the police report, Mike, May 13, 76, which is supposedly the first incident, it talks about their German Shepherd dog, so they own that German Shepherd dog on the first day on that on that so-called first incident. You know, this is Bob Major's dad yes. signed that job. Yes. Yeah. God, I, I'm having a hard time reading this. Uh, here, here, we have the bigger one. We have a bigger one, and I think that this is important. Because here, so this is the, a, a report of the first incident, supposedly the first thing that ever happens to the family, but they own the German Shepherd dog that they bought in response. Were the police called and were reports taken in 74, 75? I don't believe so. No. Were the How police even have... notified? I, you'd have to ask my mother if my father went to the cops. They certainly didn't come here. 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 When they were doing the threatening call, mm -hmm. when they were not threatening, they weren't. Did you ever speak to the police before. About before the Molotov cocktail? Did you talk to them about the letters or the calls? The the letters well it said the letter they sent but I don't was here about but the did the police know they know but did they know before before the, May before, before the, the Molotov, Molotov cocktail that they did did the police come here before the Molotov no, cocktail I don't you don't remember no. you know um actually I wanted to ask you uh, and I'm sorry for like interrupting no one fine. of the things that I would love to see the report on is when um, when did they call someone called to say that my father had gone crazy and shot the people right. in the house that's actually not in the uh, in these police reports the police was here. right not a police the ambulance and everything is there i think i saw it in another in the cars uh, five people police are reports. dead inside here that's what they say um but let's look here now it says here it names your your upstairs tenant uh, John Morrock. That was his the name. One lived there. The evil guy yeah, on the yeah, second floor. No good name. Yeah, John Morrock. So well, now we have a name. <laughs> um, Mike, any thoughts? Because you have the microphone. On. On any of this so far. Well, I mean, on the letters, if if the police were never notified. Um, and there's no mention of, of, of that in the, that it was told that, oh, we've been the victims of harassing letters and phone calls. On this report of the Molotov, in other words, like, 
they they come down. Yeah, I, they I, they come down to investigate the uh, arson, yeah. the Molotov. Okay. But there's no mention of oh, just for you guys to know. Now maybe this, this conversation right. did happen, but it wasn't noted in this report. It's we, here. what? It says here. It, it, there's another report on the Molotov. It says at no time did any other letters or call, come to this house. So it's, it actually contradicts in the police report. But that's what Joe's. That, that's after the fact. Right. This is September 77. Right. This is, like this is after the hour. collar. This is after the collar. From what, I, from what I can glean from these reports, Joe and Anthony Sarasi, they were probably assigned by the head of the DD or even a commissioner to say, I want all incidents regarding our, our, um, our end of the investigation within the cars, dog getting shot, this incident. Uh -huh. Give us an overall picture of what Berkowitz is alleged to have done here. And now they're tasked with things that happen after the fact. Right. Right, so they, they're, they're pulling out years ago, and I, I, they didn't have it then because com computerization really helped everything. For instance, if I was coming here to your home at 18 Wicker, on anything, or I'm a detective. Mm -hmm. I can do what they call a premise history. And I, I did that countless times. So I would put in eight, 18 Wicker Street, and then it would give me any calls to service here, even if it was a fire hydrant open, or uh, loud music, or any report, any time this address was called into a police agency, mm -hmm. it would come up in what they call this premise history. What these guys are going on is, Joe and Anthony, mm -hmm. is any reports that were generated for these addresses. They would have actually had to go into file cabinets up in the 4th Precinct, mm -hmm. which we had that. If, if that. Before computerization, I'd have to actually go to a file cabinet and pull out the street addresses and then look. But that's the way it was all, all, all over. We, right. weren't, we weren't the last person agency to get uh, computerized or anything else. So that, this is what we did years ago. So right. everything was filing, almost like a Dewey Decimal System where you'd have to look up the street address right. or zip code, find your street, then go through your addresses, and then find these, these reports. So if the only reports they had, Joe and Anthony Sarasi, were the ones that were generated like this Molotov case, that's the only thing that they could go on. Right. I don't think that they meant to, to get into a contradictory or, or, or even, he said, she said thing with you guys. Or they even would, worry about a timeline because the timeline was not important to this. I'm not even so sure it's important now. This says harassing phone calls, including, it's got a date. I don't know if that it is. It says here, all 76, 76. Is this the one with Joe did? Yeah, this is the one that Joe did, yeah. Okay. So this me... is, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is Joseph Fernandez. Yeah, Joe, he... Joe was a commissioner. He was a captain of internal affairs. Let, let, let me just give me a minute to read this, sure, okay? Sure. Yeah, and Joe was Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he, he had a lot of... very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember, sure. Yep. And his brother Frank was, I think, the sergeant when uh, when uh, Berkowitz got arrested. I think he was on duty. Frank Fernandez was the detective sergeant. Yep. See, this is what it says right here. The undersigned reported, proceeded to the records division and pulled out the report of said incident uh, by uh, Kelsey Hogan Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, Right, so they're uh, going after right. the fact okay. of these reports. You see, your dad had no idea who, who did it. No contact was made by Mr. Neto with the undersigned till after the arrest of Son of Sam, at which time, now we're, now we're in 77, appeared at the IED and said, now he's giving him this information. Your husband is telling Joe this. His wife received a letter which was typewritten on the envelope and block print on the letter. Said letter talked about hell, dogs, and the devil. He said he never saw the letter because his wife destroyed the letter and did not want him to see it and get alarmed, which we, we've talked no. about, right? 
-hmm. The letter was not shown to the police, according to Mr. Nito. So that's saying that you guys received this letter, but there was no follow-up with the police to say, you know, right. on, a, on, on, a, on an aggravated harassment. And now, again, this is what your dad is telling Joe uh, Fernandez. Uh, July to August 76, harassing phone calls, including one that the police responded and searched the house for dead bodies. That is the job where, where, where your, uh, the swatting is your dad got swatted. They right. called in a fake call saying he was killed. So that happened in June, July mm -hmm. or August. It, it didn't have a specific date. And that's, that makes sense according to their that, There should have been report on that. Because if numerous personnel were involved, which they were, apparently, oh, yeah. Yeah, where, somebody what? would have had to have written a report. They were outside. Of course. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I've had incidents like that, too. But a report would have had to been generated. It, it would yeah, have had to. That report's not in here at all. Right. I don't know. I can't speak on something that happened so long ago, yeah. and I don't understand why it wouldn't be. It could have been misfiled, but I find it very hard to believe that no incident report was taken on right. that. Maybe it's just, just to cover yourself in, in case you or, or your husband or anybody made a complaint, Maybe saying the police treated us horribly, blah, 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 you know, so they could say... If that came down, the, the boss would say, I want to see that job. I want to see what happened. If yeah. there's no job, heads would roll. I'll tell you that right now. These handwritten ones are just about the Molotov cocktails also. Uh, above location, dead dog. Tony Teodoro. By the way, Mike, we established this guy, Tony Teodoro, was part of the Netto clan. Isn't that far away? This yeah, guy here, uncle. he saw he saw a uh, a guy get in after the. Wasn't shooting. he a member of law enforcement? No, oh, that just was, a family friend. He was family. But the, he was the, the one other who uncle saw was. He was the FBI. FBI. Was he ever interviewed? Was name in a report, or he didn't want to get involved? Only Neto, only the father. Okay. No, but you said that he that he spoke to the cops. No, he didn't want to from anybody. So, so Roquefort did speak to the cops. Where's his name? He speak. He speak with the cop. He's a police. Yeah, he's a police. Who wanna talk to the cop? Him? Right. Of course. That makes sense. It's weird that his name isn't in here. Maybe they don't want a cop be involved in that. I don't know. Yeah, because he was in the cop. I don't know. I doubt it. I mean, you know, where were these? Where were these reports going? I mean, they were going right into a filing cabinet. No one was gonna see them. Yeah. You know, no one took. No, I mean, I'm not sure how, you know, how's the Molotov cocktail, I'm pretty sure it's serious. But. Yeah, and he's the one who saw the man go to the car. Tony Teodoro, right. Not no, my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law. He's a brother-in-law, too. Yeah, see, 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 a street index file, that's what we used, a name file. So you have two separate things, a name uh -huh. and a street index. So this, this report that you're looking at here from 77 is just done by, with old... This was done by Joe Fern. This is, was done... Because your husband went to see Joe, who at that time was, in, and Joe looked into it. And he even says to him, he said, you should have reported the, the letter. Because oh, if you don't, mm -hmm. he says that right in he here. He says to that him. in there? Yeah, you should, you should have reported that. But, I, you know, we understand why you did it. It was upsetting. There was an illness and that. Somebody you know, was going through some hard times. I get it, you know. And how would you know that? Two years later, would have, or a year later, would have exactly. to deal with the no son of Sam. There's no, there's no, you know, no, no reason to feel guilty or anything like that. It's no. totally understandable. Yeah. And, and and I'll tell you, I said before Manny came into the picture, I was kind of like I, that was all, you know, I kind of blocked that um, part of my life. Um, but it was certainly, right. of course. Um, no, you guys definitely, in my opinion, hold certain keys to this story that I think are important and that I don't think have been that I don't think have been reported on enough or at all, which is that it's very possible that Berkowitz was doing these things before he moved to this neighborhood. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did any one of your family uh, was a witness to a homicide in which you cooperated with the police? N um, <laughs> no, not family members, Sepola. but they had the same list. Are they the needles from up here on Broadway? Uh, I'm not sure. Because I, I told I told your mom I dated a girl from.
Oh. Not, not here. Not here. But you were a child. Yeah, I was 11. And it was a man calling. It was a man. So. And what, what was the context of, of the conversation on the phone? What would he say? I, I, so just, what, just, is she home? That's it? Hold on real quick. Just We had her battery run out. We were resuming uh, the conversation. We're talking to Sylvia about the content of the calls and, and whether they might have been related to Berkowitz or not. We are conceding the possibility that those, that the, that the, that those calls might have just been a local perv. As opposed to but what, what I, see, I was before I, I I met you. I was under the impression when we talked earlier that they were of s sexual in nature. No. Yeah, I thought that they were too. I mean, they weren't. You, well, you said that I they, don't know what were the calls coming. I to didn't Sylvia. get any calls. They go to call Sylvia, but they don't say nothing about sex or nothing. When they call Sylvia, my husband take the phone. Yeah. I say, who you are, my my daughter. He said. She don't, she don't know how you want to call my daughter. She's a child. She's 11, yeah. 11, yeah. One but, but it's a man, man called my daughter. But a man calling... She want to talk to my daughter. How could that and not be said? My daughter answered the phone. I answered to her. And but the, 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 uh, the husband, your dad, was the one who took the calls. He's the one take it, and she's never type and never take a call. When Did you take things. any calls from... No. It's only... I mean, for an 11-year-old kid, that's strange. See, I, I, I was thinking that because of the way you were growing up, your mom walked you to school. Yeah. You know, you, you, your school was at St. Mary's, right? Yeah, but she never I, go I, You didn't really hang around around here, no. right? I mean, no, I can't see that. So, like, how... You know, how opportunity was that be able how would she, how, would, how would they know your name? You weren't in the phone book. Right, I'm thinking as, her from the school, like a teacher or... Perhaps. Well, we were, actually, that, that's a good question because I'm very curious about looking at the details because I remember my father uh, took the, our name from the book, from the phone book, because of the calls. So yeah. he was paying because at the time you had to pay to yeah. not be in the... I have a funny story about that. I was mm -hmm. telling you, my mom was so cheap. I hope she never watches this. <laughs> we had a listed phone number, and my father was a detective, and he worked big cases. And we had these kooks by us, too, where I lived, mm -hmm. that were the same thing that you went through with the, the rocks and all. Unfortunately, we both grew up next to places where people walk. Mm -hmm. You know? You had the aqueduct. I had the city stairs. For whatever reason, that's where nuts go. And that's what they do. They throw rocks at your house. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened to probably you and them and everybody along this aqueduct. Um, petty vandalism, harassment, breaking statues. I saw that. It's a terrible thing. And my, my father had the, my mother had the, our name listed. And we would get calls and it was scare that I was around the same age as you. It would scare the heck out of us, you know, getting these calls. And I don't know what, what they would say, but... I'm sure they wasn't good. Right. And it was almost a form of terror just to yeah. do that. Right. I mean, but you've got to figure, if a grown man's calling for an 11-year-old girl, what other... There is, there is no other make? reasons for it, right. Yeah. But, yeah... Uh, the, the, but it couldn't... It might not have been Berkowitz. No. In fact, I, I... I thought when I first got into it, there was... It was Carr. Carr. Right, we all did. Yeah, there because were, of the... the, the uh, the rapist the, the, and stuff. Yeah, the yeah. picture that, that was painted of him, which Correct. now we know is unfair. Which was unfair and most likely false. But that doesn't mean there was another... Right. But the, but the issue really here with the Nettos vis-a-vis -vis Berkowitz is the letters were peppered with the same terminology that he used in his letters. So I'm absolutely sure that he was sending these letters. And, of course, the issue is then when did these letters come relative to relative to the firebombing. Um, and, and you guys are saying that the letters were part of this thing that led you to get Rocket the dog before May 13th, 1976. Yes. That the when letters did... were part of that decision process. I think we got the dog before. Before, before the letters. Probably, no? Well, you got, from what I'm seeing in here, you guys got, you, you, you were going through what I just said, these vandalisms. Local kids around here, and the neighborhood was changing. I grew up around but here too. So. No, no, not, 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 not with your neighbors. But he even says in reports that your husband said that mm. there had been acts of vandalism around yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. know that for a fact. I mean that that was mm -hmm. going on. Right. Because when Carr 
before, if you know this case, before Cassara contacted the cars about Berkowitz, they thought that their dog was shot over, like, get out of the neighborhood, but because mm -hmm. the neighborhood's turning black. So that was their first thought. This Mrs. Cassara, when she was talking to the cars, mm -hmm. that's what they thought. That they that, that there was an act of vandalism against their dog, which would have been going on in that time frame. I'm not trying to make it a racial yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, people yeah. said. And there was, again, I know because for, it, the vandalism was going on. Oh yeah. So let's try to think about this then logically and as, as objectively as possible. Rocks throwing at the at the at the house, most likely not Berkowitz. Right. Right. Probably just acts of local vandalism, yeah. and even you guys can concede that that that, that probably was. The that's, calls, that, that's teenage stuff. Right. The calls to the house, iffy on Berkowitz, most likely a local perv who happened to know Sylvia's name somehow. It breaks pattern. He's never done that He's to never anybody done else. That to anybody right. Mm -hmm. But the letters were Berkowitz. Because they're he was a letter the writer. Same, right, he was a letter writer, and he was writing about their dog, the same stuff he was writing to the cars he was writing here. So the issue really takes us now to forget the rock throwing, forget the calls. Is the date. The issue is the date of these letters, and did they come before the Molotov cocktail or after? And ultimately, I don't even really think it matters all that much, really, um, because if Berkowitz started this on May 13th, it's him working alone, most likely. And if when he, did he move to Pine? And if he started April 76. And if he started this in, in um, 75, well, it means that he was stalking you from afar, which then, which then brings a whole new wrinkle into this, because it means that he had discovered you guys while living in the Bronx. And that brings, a, again, a whole new wrinkle into the story. So I guess the main... Thing that we're trying to figure out here is taking the calls and the rock throwing out of it, Sylvia. It's just a matter of timelining of these letters, and you're sure that these letters came while your mom was in the hospital. She oh. that was the same story. Same as you've always said. I, like I, I didn't see the letters, so I'm like right. telling you what I heard from from day one. Yes. Okay, and I don't want to put words yes, in your mouth. Yes, from day my one. Sister and my mother. And I want my sister with the letter, my mother here, and my husband is very depressed with me in the hospital, and they say that we, they don't want to show him. Okay, so letters while hospital. Now you, Sylvia, say that this Mets blowout of the Padres, and the only one I can find that could be considered a blowout in those two years, was in July of 74. And you're saying that, that you went to the Mets game while your mom was in the hospital, and you're sure of this. Yes, that I went to the Mets game when my mother was in the hospital. Okay, so that means that, that the possibility exists that you went to this Mets game in 74 and letters were coming to this house in 1974, which is only a month after Berkowitz gets decommissioned from the Army. But he had relatives in the neighborhood. He could have known this area. I mean, it, 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 the possibility exists for it all. I guess yeah. the, the and, and why would I, he even come? I, I just, I just want to, until we know that for certain, that they lived at Halls Terrace through property During records and tax records, right. you cannot make that okay, fair a, a definitive statement. In all likelihood, it's true. But unless you know that, or exactly what time they actually, uh, Berkowitz, uh, made a connection with them. Right. These kooks, from what, from what I'm seeing, they might have, uh, the only reason they reached out to him because now he's infamous. Because he really wanted money. Yeah. Right, right. And it, there's an angle for them to exploit him. Money, but they, they might have just said, even if they, if, when he hooked up with, with, with uh, Betty Falco, and she probably told his sister or whoever else, oh, I you know, remember the boy I gave up for adoption. He's re-entered my life. They might like, oh, that's great. But not have been too too too, uh, keen, on too keen on meeting him, or you know, right. at this stage of the game, right. see if he was ten or eleven. You we know, we have to but, glean that more, like what. His yeah, you can you can get that people. through tax records uh, f f from these people. Now, if they did there, uh, did reside here, there is a possibility that he had um, he had some kind of connection to Northwest Yonkers. Correct. That we can that we can prove. We can prove because right. everything else, if it's conjecture, I, um, I agree with you, Mike. I I don't. I, I want to 
I don't represent my department anymore, but you kind of do once you're a cop and mm -hmm. it's there for life. And obviously, I've made mistakes in my career yeah. too. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't get too upset over it. Nobody's outwardly uh, accusing you guys of anything. And I can understand. I'm not upset. Yeah, no, 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 I'm no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, 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 when Manny no, what's like really, no, no. really happening is they're trying to they're trying to um, and Joe, denigrate my work. Who? Well, just the detractors. They're trying okay, to yeah, because not yet. Police reports. The Nettles told a different the, the, story. These are things, like I said, to put it into context. Um, and and Joe and Anthony and Tony were 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 put in a weird predicament. Because now it's after the fact. Now they're going to get called in and say, "Listen, we had to basically cover our tracks. What, what was our, what was our dealing? What, what dealings did we have that we can tie in with Berkowitz? Again, because this case had not been adjudicated yet. Like mm -hmm. I was telling him, nobody knew that he was going to go in and eventually say, "I did a law." Mm -hmm. And then no, there was no trial in this case. He took a plea. He took the guilty plea and went to jail. Yeah. There was no argumentatives. But every detective in every agency has to prepare that that's a possibility is going to happen. Because we don't know how the case is going to turn out. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do any murders here. But now we know he lived here. And now we know he shot Harvey. He, did, he killed your dog. We shot well, your well we knew, I mean, and for us, it's much easier to believe that Berkowitz did everything because it's, you know, well, closure, right. you know, right. um, and, and I, I, like I told you, the, the person that actually told me was Detective Zigo. He came and he told us that, um, that Berkowitz had, um, had confessed, confessed yeah. to, uh, terrorizing right. our house because my father, uh, Joaquin, Joaquin, which I don't know. Now I don't even know if it's my father because it was another Joaquin right, upstairs, Joaquin was tormenting him. Right. That was from Detective Zigo. I think it was Joaquin Gonzalo he was obsessed with because he's been mentioned in his letters in the apartment. Mm -hmm. Joaquin Gonzalo is low on blood. He needs his fill of blood. Yeah. Um, weird, man. And uh, uh, question, I had a quite a final, or sort of a final question, but I kind of... And everything that. stopped. Can I ask you a question? Sure. If your mom would remember? Do you remember who your postman was? Do you remember who your mailman was? I remember it's a young guy with long hair. With blonde long hair. Blonde? Yeah. No, yeah. That was the one after. Yeah, after the other one, yeah. We don't I don't think she remembers the other the... one. I don't know. The guy with the long hair was probably Mike Rachapi. Was he good looking? He's a good boy, but No, was he good looking? Do you remember? My mother loved him because it's many years he come here and He's so sweet with my mother. Yeah, there was a guy from my neighborhood who actually passed away from heroin. Uh -huh. But Mike Rechopping is a really good-looking guy. Uh -huh. And I don't know what happened to him, but he got into drugs. But he was a postman. And we see, I yeah. see him when I was working around here. And I'd see him, and I, mm -hmm. and I would tell the guys, I said, that guy years ago, he was a real good-looking guy. He still was handsome, but right. he was drug out. Yeah, drug out. Now, the reason I ask is because there, there was a local uh, postman who lived not far from here. Um. So I think we're basically done. I mean, I'm not so sure that we were able to really establish anything, although I do think it's important that we establish that you got Rocket in relation to these incidents. Now, what incidents, though? The, 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 the rocks and the calls or the letters, right? We have to know, like, why did you get yeah. Rocket? Yeah, I mean, it was a mix of both the... You know, the rocks at 3 o'clock in the morning, the calls coming in. But those uh, might not have been Berkowitz. The letters, the, the letters, like I said, Manny, it, it wasn't because of the letters, because we didn't know. Right? right. We didn't know. You don't know if it was local or not. Yeah. But right. just, yeah, just you get a dog just from the neighborhood, too, and protect your home. But, but my father mm. did not like dogs. Oh, no? Right, and he, I think that that's a key. That's a yes, key of this. Yes, he and and not because he, you know, but only because he used his. He loved his garden, right? And he didn't want any, you know, anything to ruin the garden. So yeah. the main takeaways for me are the issue with getting rock. You you had rocket the day of the first official Berkowitz mm -hmm. incident, 
right? And I'm putting that yes. in quotes. And and we got it, and that I remember we got it in a place called Puppy Palace. I think it was in Yonkers, um, and we uh, decided to get a German Shepherd because my uncle, uh, Rockford, oh, says get a young dog like and train them so that they know you know how to how to right. defend the house and know, and answer your commands. So Rocket went to school. So um, you got this dog clearly in response to the incidents happening here. Now, whether those incidents were Berkowitz or not is still right. up in the air. But then we have the, the very thorny issue of the letters coming while Maria was in the hospital, and you insist that was 74, late 74, early 75, that letters started coming here. I, I wouldn't say insist. Since the beginning, my mother has, you know, once we this all came out, right. it was always many years ago, it was went while she was in the hospital. That's what my grandmother used to say. That was the, right. the story. Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, when you're at eleven, it'd be very hard to be definitive on a date. But you just have to. You, yeah, but you go on events. Like my right. mom was in the hospital right. at the time. Like yeah. I remember right. my mom in 1985 had to go literally break my grandmother out of a hospital in Russia because she got sick on a, on the Orient Express, and I'll always <laughs> remember that as 85 because you know I remember where I was. Right. Yeah. And well, that yeah. Kind of course. Stuff. Yeah. Incidents that happen. So sure. I think that you're, personally speaking, this is just my opinion, I think your recollections about the letters are correct. If they're not, though, and everything started with May 13th, the official Berkowitz incident started with May 13th, well, it doesn't really change anything. It, does, it doesn't because we, even if all those reports were done, how can you tie them into Berkowitz? It'd be, it'd be a theory, but it'd be right. an unprovable theory. But again, it, but but even if so, if everything started with Berkowitz moving to the neighborhood here, like these police reports do uh, do imply, well, it doesn't really change anything in terms of Son of Sam. No, it's still him working alone. It actually only kind of changes things in terms of the Son of Sam story, if indeed he was sending these things before he moved to the neighborhood, because it would imply a terror campaign from the Bronx, which then brings a whole other wrinkle into the Berkowitz and the Son of Sam story because it would mean that he was really targeting these people several years and starting these crimes several years before he ended up shooting people but, in the Bronx. But like how are you theory, when... It changes, the, it changes the tenor of the case. So, Rock, Rocky was basically a puppy when he was killed. No, he was an adult dog. He was... Two years Hello. old. So you got him in 74. Hello. We, I believe so. Before you came because here. he was... That four would make months, sense, Like, yeah. they had to be... Uh, you, they were very strict about these, the German Shepherd. Well, you know better than me. No, I had right? a they Shepherd. Have to be like yeah, we four, had a Shepherd, too. Yeah, they had to be like, was it uh, four months? Yeah. Um, so we picked him, and they said, yeah, he has to, like, he had to stay a little bit of time to right. wean off the, the, the mom. And then, and, and we picked him up, so he was, he was like four, four months. And then when he died, he was two years old. And I remember because after the, his one-year birthday, uh -huh. they, he's supposedly an adult dog, and he used to have the... <laughs> one yeah, of one his year ears down, was yeah. floppy. I'm like, this is never... They said after one year, they're lying. You know, so, Mike, let's do this timeline. So, two years old on December 76. That brings us to the baby, the, the dog's birth of that December 74. If it was four or five months old when they got the dog, right. that brings it to... Um, August. August, September, it was no, born. December of 74. That brings it into 75. It brings it into March 75 that they get the dog. Because the dog was born yes. in December 74. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. The dog it, was get, born in, yeah. Right. They wow. get the dog Two five years, months freaking later. Anniversary. Right. They get the dog five months later. Yeah. They get the dog in 75. They get the dog in it, it, as a response to these incidents. So we know these incidents were taking place in 75. I don't think that that's a... a but the issue is, were these incidents Berkowitz related, the rocks mm -hmm. and the calls? I'm willing to concede no. Yeah. Because it doesn't fit. We just got to be fair. Yeah. The letters, though, were. Yeah. And they, Here's the letter, right? Right. And the letters, and the letters still. And they were weird. The, right. And the letters still, the family say, happened 74, 75. And that, that changes things slightly because it shows that Berkowitz, if true, right? It shows that Berkowitz was terrorizing these people while he was living in the Bronx. Which then implies, like, how the hell did he know about this place? Why did he move in here in the first place? He says it was because this was the center of activity, which implies an already happening campaign. At least that's what it says in the Ultimate Evil, and you know, and then we know how we know Maury could have made that quote up. But a lot mm -hmm. of questions, in other words. How will he be himself when they shoot in the dock and they found getting cut down? 
Right, exactly. That's the other issue you can here. Do by and you do have the account. Right, we have the account from a family, a person in the clan, Tony Teodor, who says that he got into a car on Warburton Avenue. It does not say that there was a person in the car with him, but three witnesses, well, two witnesses, Ter Teresa and Jackie, said that there was a person in the car waiting for him and he got into the passenger side. That's a whole other rub. Yeah. I guess subject for another, go, for another he, he day. One go out the cop, and he sold too. Right, right. Well, listen. Wait, we, uh, uh, one, one thing. <laughs> King, uh, King was. When did you get King? Right after. After. Yeah. Right after. Yes. King, Early seventy-seven. I don't know why we Early seventy-seven. King. I don't know why we do. I have no idea why we named him King. Did I you know? Did you know Duke? The yes. Dog next door? Yeah. He was a good dog. Was he a good dog? And yeah. he's a shepherd as well? Yes. And nobody do nothing to the house, what my husband say. They have a dog, have bark all night too, <laughs> and nothing happened to the house, only to us. So we have, so the dogs bark that's all true. night, huh? Yeah, that's true. Right. And that one's closer to his home. And that's yeah. why he yeah. would, that's, and, that, and that goes with his but obsession says, over noise. Me. That one's actually even closer to Pine Street, because it's, yeah. it's right. a little closer. Then, then and I, nothing I'm, happened to them. Maybe the only thing is with Berkowitz is that even he, we have this picture of a monster, but he would only do it if he felt he could get away. Right. So he might have, he might have wanted to kill Duke and something happened. Somebody came outside. In other words, he might have been ready to shoot this dog mm -hmm. and some, either somebody walked by. So it could just be a matter of circumstance that yeah. he killed uh, yeah, because, Rocket, and, because he, Rocket, and he shot Harvey. Rocket yeah, was not outside. He, well, my father let him out, you know, because he was, you know, right. there were a lot of people. Mother and my sister, right? They say they're going to burn their house, yeah. and they, t because the devil is in the, in the in house. The attic. That is what my mother and my sister told me. That That's they, a Berkowitz that, letter. Uh, yeah? That's a Berkowitz letter, talking mm -hmm. about the attic. My husband said at the time, why happened to us? We don't bother nobody, We're, and those people are good. It doesn't people. matter because then he's a nut. He was a nut. And he focused what on you. What about nut? What little bullet put it in only he? Share the pain, right? <laughs> so, but it works out time-wise. They get, they get King in, in early 77, the Breslin letter, where Wicked King Wicker, that's June 77. Manny broke that. Mm. Manny broke that. That's one thing that, I mean, this has done nothing to do with what happened here. It's shocking to me that, that, uh, you know, prior to prior to uh, Berkowitz, there was a Zodiac killer. You were probably too yeah. young to remember it, but now you know about it. And I really, me and Manny are going to go into this. I really think that he really influenced Berkowitz. Berkowitz copied so many things that that Zodiac did, but he wasn't as smart as Zodiac. Zodiac never wanted to get caught. Who's Zodiac? I, he was a guy who killed. He was a serial killer out in the West Coast. But uh, Berkowitz wanted to get caught. Berkowitz yeah. wanted to get caught. Uh, Zodiac didn't. But um, well, where was I going with this? With the uh, uh, that he copied. That he copied the. the no, we were talking about uh, Duke and King oh. and the Breslin letter. I was surprised because now with the Zodiac, everybody in the country and involved, and a lot of people were civilians who broke that code. There were people who liked to do puzzles and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they. The uh, police department asked everybody, you know, if you have any experience, and they printed the letter so everybody can read it. And the fact that that letter, which, in my opinion, and now we know, is full of clues. Full of clues. Full yeah. of clues. And nobody, including around here, I won't mention names, but Duke King, I mean, 22. Right. 22 Wicker. Is where Duke, Duke lives. lives. Wicked King Wicker. Your dog's king. You live on Wicker. Right. John Wheaties. I could throw a rock and hit where that phone number goes to. John Wheaties' car. John Wheat car, but point taken. John Wheat. Like, it's just shocking to me. It's shocking. It's like, shocking to me that even, I'm not taking take from a cop point of view, because everybody in their mother was reading, reading about it, this right? case. Mm -hmm. And that letter, I mean, remember that I was 12 years old when that came out, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And to think it was just written not even 200 feet from where we're sitting right now. Yeah, on on the uh, aqueduct. Oh, yeah. on, in his apartment up on Pine Street. 
No, oh, the letter, but yeah, no, the 44 2 over here. Oh, right, just... yeah, yeah. So, anyway, listen, I know that you're busy, Sylvia, and you gotta run. So, we're very appreciative. You keep sure. these documents. Thank these you. you. Don't, yeah, I just wanna leave this. Don't, don't, um, don't feel that, 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 that Saras, you and Joe Sirlak, I could speak for them. Anthony's still alive. Joe was a good, really good guy. If anything, them, uh, there, there was clerical mistakes made by officers prior to them getting involved. They're detectives now. They probably haven't worked this sector in years. They were detectives, so they weren't patrolmen. So they can only go with what they can get through those street right. file Which indexes. And also, things could, have been, things could have been uh, uh, missing. Like a report could have, could have right. been in there. Right, see the report for the swatting incident. For the swatting incident, I mean, I find that highly That's unusual. Crazy. But we know that nobody reported the letters or the phone call harassment. All right, guys. You know? Yes, I, I yeah. think that's... Yeah. Accurate. All right, well, listen, we... Let me just... Oh, I'm trying to... Every time, I, every time we show you, every now and then we say, oh, I'll blur you out, don't worry. <laughs> so, all right, guys, we're, we're done. Uh, I want to say thank you so much to the Nettos once again, for, for also to Mike for showing up and uh, actually really contributing some really great thoughts. Uh, where are we with this? Well, more questions than answers, but we're a little bit closer to gleaning some of the, uh, some of what happened here, and that's all we can really ask for. So, all right, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. I love this house. You like it? I love this house. I don't like it. I love this house. I love this. I, I, I told you what, last time I was here, I didn't have a window seat like this, but I had very similar wood, uh, carpentry. And, and these.